forgot to give a guitar introduction on my other videos. That's uh, an old song called Guitar Boogie. Uh, I had surgery on my thumb uh, back in May of 2023, and the thing I'm having the hardest time getting back to is speed. So that's a song that's kind of got a fast tempo. So I've been working on Guitar Boogie. Well, what we're going to work on today is similar triangles. And similar triangles have a real crucial role in trigonometry, and they will show us how to develop later on what we call the unit circle. So there are two triangles. There's the 45-45 right triangle. Obviously, 90, 45, and 45, of course, all out of 180 degrees. So the sides are always can be reduced down to this ratio. The, the sides opposite 45 can be reduced to one, and they're both equal because they're equal angles. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse turns out to be the square root of two. Okay, so I'm going to open up this applet and just kind of show you what I mean by that, by the sides reducing. So here, for instance, you have a 45 45 right triangle. I'm going to take this down to where the side is equal to 1. Can't see that very good, but right now the sides are 1, 1, and square root of 2. Okay, since we've learned about similar triangles, if we doubled every side, brought that side up to 2, then it would be 2, 2, and then 2 square root of 2. And if I tripled every side, the, the angle would still, the triangle is still similar, it'd be 3, 3. And, square to, and three squared to two like that. So that's what happens is when what we say is whenever we have a 30, a 45, 45 right triangle, the sides can always be reduced down to this ratio of one, one square root of two. So that's what I mean by that. Uh, we also have the uh, 30, 60, 90 right triangle and the sides on this can be reduced to one, two, square root of three. And they go in order. This is kind of a good way to remember this. 30 is the smallest angle, so its opposite side is the smallest side. 60 is the angle in the middle. Square root of three is about 1.7, so it has the side in the middle, which is square root of three. The hypotenuse is opposite the biggest angle, so it's two. Okay, so let me open up that same applet and show you again what this uh, looks like with a 30-60 right triangle. Okay, so here's a 30-60 right triangle. Uh, I'm going to take the side all the way down to 1, and then the ratio goes like this. You have the smallest side's 1, the side in the middle is 1 times the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. If I double everything, notice that the side should go to 2, 2 root 3 and 4 if I double it, because these will be creating similar triangles. Okay, and then if I triple it, same idea. Get it everything tripled, I'm going to end up with 3, 3 squared to 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. So no matter how these sides are in a 30-60 triangle, you can always reduce that down to 1 square root of three and two. That's what I want to show you on that. Okay, going back here, I want to show you how we derive these things. Okay, so if you want to derive a 45-45 right triangle, what you do is you start off basically with a square. And what I'm going to do on this is I'm just going to take a diagonal. I'm going to start with all of the sides of this are one. Okay, just for simplicity. Then I'm going to take a diagonal, and there's a theorem in geometry that if you take a diag diagonal to a square, it will bisect these 90-degree angles into 45 degrees and 45 degrees. So what you end up with is you end up with a 45 right, 45 right triangle with sides of 1. And then if we do the Pythagorean theorem, we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Notice you're going to get, get ahead of myself there, we're going to get 1 plus 1 or 2 is equal to c squared. Then I can do the square root of both sides to get that hypotenuse, which would be the diagonal is square root of 2. So that's where that triangle comes from. The 30-60 uh, right triangle, 
you start with an equilateral triangle. And again, I'm going to let every side equal to one. There's more than one way to do this. So if you have a um, an equilateral triangle, all of these angles are going to be 60 degrees if it's an equilateral triangle. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to take what we call an altitude. Okay, we're going to go straight down at a perpendicular. Okay, that's going to be an altitude to a triangle that's going to have a perpendicular, a 90 degree angle. There is a theorem, again, in geometry that can be proved that this angle of 60 degrees would be bisected. So what you would end up with is a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. So you have your 30, 60 right triangle. The other thing, and there's a theorem in geometry that says if you have an equilateral triangle, the altitude bisects the opposite side. So if the whole side's one, then both of these individual sides right here will be one half. So what you end up with is you end up with a triangle that has 90 as a side of one half, a hypotenuse of one. And I'm just going to give that a variable X and use the Pythagorean theorem to show you how this goes. So I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem. I'll do X squared plus one half squared is equal to one squared. That'll be X squared plus one fourth is equal to one. I can subtract a fourth from both sides to get X squared is one minus one fourth. I can get a common denominator to change that to four over four minus a fourth. So that gives X squared is equal to three over four. Okay, then I can do square root of both sides. And what that will give me is that will give me X equals square root of three over square root of four. And at, that could be written as square root of three over two. Okay, so what we have, this is kind of what you end up with. In this triangle, you started off with a side of one, this was a half, and we just showed that this is square root of 3 over 2. Well, if we multiply every side by the same number, we're not going to change the angles. You know, the angles are going to stay 30, 60, 90. So let's just multiply every side by 2, and look what happens. Okay, that will give you square root of 3, that will give you 1, this will give you 2. So you end up with the derivation of that special triangle like that. Okay, so if you ever forget that, there's a way to derive that. Okay, so on the next page, what we're going to look at is using the this feature uh, to, uh, to find a missing side of a special triangle. So I'm going to go to that, and I'm going to load up, and I'm going to put up a diagram here on this. Okay, so what I wanted to do is just kind of give you these two diagrams over here. When you have a, a 30, 60 right triangle, you know, the sides are always going to go, can be reduced to 1, 2, square root of 3. A can represent just a constant. They're always in this ratio. So if, if A is a number, you double it to get the hypotenuse. If A is a number, you multiply it by square root of 3 to get that other leg. So what you could do in this problem is you could use this diagram to kind of help you with this then, okay? So what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to set up a correspondence here. So in this particular problem, the hypotenuse would correspond to that 2A, and then the side that's opposite the 60 would correspond to that root 3, square root of 3 times A. So really, if we're going to find... Um, side, uh, side uh, X and Y, we can set up this correspondence. So if you look at Y, that corresponds to 2A. So what I'm going to do is this is a 30 degree angle, and the side opposite 30 degrees could just be thought of as A. Okay, so I'm just going to say that 30 degrees is equal to A, according to this diagram, like that, okay? And uh, then if you look at the 60 degree angle, the 60 degree angle corresponds, the side opposite of that corresponds to square root of 3a. Okay, so if we set these two things equal to each other, if we have square root of 3a equals 12, 
that would allow us to get what A is. Okay, so let me just kind of write this over here. So you're setting up an equation to find what A is in this problem then. Okay, so the 12 corresponds to the square root of 3 over A. So we can solve this equation by dividing by square root of 3. And what that will give me is that will give me A equals 12 divided by square root of 3. I'm going to go ahead and rationalize the denominator by multiplying by square root of 3 over square root of 3. And that will give me A is equal to 12 times the square root of 3 over 3. See, that's square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, so that's 3. Then you can reduce 12 over 3 to get 4. So you end up getting A is equal to 4 times the square root of 3. Okay? Now, so it'll be pretty easy to, to do this now, to find what X and Y are based on that information now. Okay, so let's just kind of set up the correspondence now. The 12 is opposite the 60, so it's going to, and this X is opposite the 30. So if you look at the X, the side opposite the X should just be the, the value of A like that. Okay, so if you kind of look at this now, we know that A is 4 root 3, so now if we want to find X, X is opposite the 30 degree angle, so that's just going to be equal to A, which is equal to 4 root 3. Okay, so X will be equal to 4 times the square root of 3. Okay, if we want to find Y, if you look at Y, Y is opposite the 90 degree angle. Opposite the 90 degree angle is 2A, so Y is 2A, so it would be 2 times A, which is 4 times the square root of 3, so Y would be equal to 8 times the square root of 3. So that's how you can find A and B. There are other ways to do this. This is one way that I like to show students how to do that. If you know one of the sides, it's a 30-60 triangle, and you know one of the sides, you can figure out what A is in this diagram, okay? So that's how, how that's gonna go. One other thing I wanna show you on this is, if you look at the answers we got on this, on this triangle, I'll try to squeeze this in at the side here. We have 12, X was four root three, and Y was eight root three. Okay, now we're used to the um, this being two. Okay, what we're used to is the ratio can always be reduced to, if this is 30, 60, the ratio can always be broken down into one square root of three and two. So if I divide everything by, um, by the same number, then I should be able to get those ratios on this problem. Okay, so I was gonna show you how to check this. I had to pause the video for something to check on something. So uh, this is kind of how you can check and make sense of this. So if you go back to this diagram, this is, this is what we essentially have, is we have the 90 degree angle, we have the side Y was eight root three, we had the side X, which was opposite the 30 degree angle, that turned out to be four times the square root of three, and then the side opposite of the 60 turned out to be 12. So you can reduce this like this. The idea is, um, the, the side opposite 30 is always going to be 1. So if I divided every side of this triangle by 4 root 3, let me show you what would happen. Okay, well, that would be 1. Uh, this would be 2. And that's what we expect the hypotenuse to be. And if you did this, 12 divided by 4 would be 3 root 3. Then if you rationalize this denominator you're going to get 3 root 3 over 3, which is going to give you square root of 3. And like I said, if you have a 30-60 right triangle, the sides will always be reduced down into that 1 square root of 3, 2 ratio like that. So that's actually how you can tell you're right on the problem. I like to just use these, um, the diagrams, just put an A where, uh, where the sides are located. Okay, so the next one, there's a couple of ways to do this. This one, it can be done a lot of different ways. You know that this is a 45 degree angle, so since all three angles add up to 
180 in a triangle, that's also got to be a 45 degree angle. This problem right here could be done with the Pythagorean theorem. I think I, since I'm kind of teaching this method, I'm going to just kind of show you how this goes like this. So the idea is the sides opposite 45 could be some variable A, and then this would be A times square root of 2. What we showed is a 45-45 right triangle can be reduced down into the sides 1, 1 square root of 2 like that. So what you have on this is uh, you could set this equal to A. These two sides right here are going to be the same as A. Okay, so in this problem, A would be equal to 7. Okay, so X would also have to be equal to 7. And then if you wanted to find, um, hold on, hold on, that's not right. Uh, that's wrong, teacher. Okay, let me show you what you would do on this then. So that side here is the hypotenuse. So the side opposite the right angle would be A times square root of 2. Okay, so what we get is we get A is equal to 7. So that means the sides opposite are going to be the same. So Y will be equal to A. So Y is also going to be 7. Okay, and then we set this equal to, we set this expression A times the square root of 2. Uh, just plugging in A for 7, then you would get 7 root 2. So X would be equal to 7 times square root of 2. This is a problem that could be pretty easily reasoned out in your head, but what you can do on the problem is uh, just use these reference triangles over here to set them equal to the whole corresponding side. So what I was doing on this is this is 7, so that's what A is. A is going to be the number op uh, opposite the 45 degree angle. So those two things are the same. Okay. You could also do this problem this way if you wanted to. You could just say, uh, Y is 7 automatically. Then you could just say 7 squared plus 7 squared equals the square of the hypotenuse, like that, by using the Pythagorean theorem. So you'd have 49 plus 49 equals X squared. That would be 98 equals X squared. Then if you do square root of both sides, you're going to get something that you can break down like this. So you would get 7 times square root of 2 that way also. So it could be done that way if you wanted to. Okay. So again, a good way to do these is refer to these uh, diagrams. And again, a 3060 is always reduced down to 1, 2, and square root of 3. If you just multiply everything by a variable A, then you get this expression. 45, 45 right triangles always reducible down to 1, 1, square root of 2. So just replace this with A, A, and A square root of 2. That's how you can do that. Okay, so the next one, uh, we have a 45, 45 right triangle. What we know is these things are equal. Now, I'm giving you that C is equal to 6 inches in this problem. So if you wanted to use this triangle as a reference, the hypotenuse is represented by... A times square root of 2. So we could solve the equation A times square root of 2 equals 6. You could uh, divide both sides by square root of 2. So you would end up getting A is equal to 6 over the square root of 2. Okay, You could rationalize the denominator by multiplying by square root of 2 over 2. So you would end up getting A is equal to 6 times the square root of 2 over 2. And then that could be reduced to 3 times the square root of 2. So that's what A is. And if you look at your diagram right there, A is going to be that number. So A would turn out to be 3 times the square root of 2, and it would be the same on all sides like that. Okay, so opposite the 45 would both be equal, so that would be A equals square root of, square root of 2. So that would give you the answer to what those two sides are right there. And again, a way to check your answer on this and make sense of it is if you have a 45-45 right triangle where these two congruent sides are 3 root 2 and the hypotenuse is 6, well, remember, we can always break this down into 1, 1 square root of 2. So if I divide these two, th everything, by 3 root 2, 
I'll prove to you that, that it's right. That would be one. That would also be one. And then this would be two over the square root of two. You could rationalize the denominator to get two root two over two. The twos would cross out giving you that. Okay, so basically you can always tell these things are right. So this is just one approach to doing this. I don't know that you'll do this very much in a trig class. It, the biggest thing that we do with the special triangles is we use this to develop the unit circle. So that's the idea. Okay, so let's go to next page, and I'm going to have you all work out the problems on the next page. I'm going to move these diagrams down here so you can refer to this if you want to. If you have another way that you think is a valid way to do the problem, you can always do it this way. So I'm just going to set this up so that you can see this okay. Then I'll give you a little time to see if you can figure out the missing sides on this. So on this side, we want to just say, just pick some variables. You can call that A and you can call that C. Over here, if you want to call this um, uh, X and Y, it's up to you. So I'll let you try to see if you can do these two problems based on the ratios for the special triangles. Pause the video, and then when you're done, just come back. Okay, so if you want to check your answers and see if you did this right, on the first one, I used these variables A and C, so the A turned out to be 7, so this side of the triangle 7, and then this side C turned out to be 14. So the missing sides, you should have got 14, and you should have got 7. Now, the way I did this is the side we were given was opposite 60. If you look at the diagram, the side opposite 60 can be represented by square root of 3a. So I set square root of 3a equal to that, solve the equation to get 7. Okay, now, so that's what a is, is this side. And then c, if you look at that opposite the 90 degree angle, is 2a. So c is going to be the hypotenuse, so that's 2a. If a is 7, I do 2 times 7 to get 14. Okay, so that's the way that I like to do the problem. And then checking what I did is the sides turned out to be 7, seven root 3 was given. You kind of look at the sides. You are given this. We found this side to be 7 and 14. Well, if you divide every side by 7, then you will reduce this down as far as you can. 7 over 7 is 1. 14 over 7 is 2. 7 root 3 over 7 gives you root square root of 3. So you end up with the 1 square root of 3, 2 triangle like that. Okay, next one, what I did is I looked at the 12. 12 is opposite the right angle. So the 12 corresponds to the expression a times the square root of 2. Set those equal to each other, solve the equation. I rationalize the denominator. I end up getting a is 6 root 2. You look at your diagram. A and A are both equal. They're both the side opposite the 45 degree angle. So they would both be equal to 6 root 2. Okay. Checking the answer, uh, we, were, we were given 12. We figured out the other two sides were 6 root 2. So if you divide everything by 6 root 2, you will get these sides reduced to 1. And then if you do 12 divided by 6 root 2, work out the details, you'll end up with square root of 2. So you end up with that 1, 1, square root of 2 triangle like that. Okay, like I said, I don't think you'll do this very much, but it's a good exercise to help you understand the mathematical relationship that exists between these two special triangles. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video and even the guitar introduction. So thank you for watching. Hope this helps you understand the special triangle.